Welcome back. It is the NTV Press Box as we discuss the biggest issues of the week when it comes down to sport. The hashtag once again on Twitter is NTV Press Box. Now, he made his debut against one of the powerhouses in African football, the Black Stars of Ghana. But recently, the Uganda Cranes, for which he plays for, has been under the spotlight because they have lost their last two friendlies, which is something we shall focus on later. But there's a bigger story at a personal level that we shall be discussing. Mr. Seth Hans, uh, Uganda's number one in goal, uh, Mamelodi Sundown's number one, uh, a man who has won African Footballer of the Year. Um, what else can I say? What else? What else? A man who has first Lionel Messi. Um, <laughs> That's it. Dennis Onyango, welcome to the show, man. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. We're afraid to have you here, but you're always in and out of the country, so it's, it's, it's always a battle. I told um, you, I'll be here at one stage. And yes, I'm here. And, and, and it's fully our pleasure. You know, I think I, think, I think I should start off with a story that has gotten Uganda talking. I, I saw a picture on your Twitter and your Instagram. You met Lionel Messi. <laughs> like, like, now, me as a fan, I'm saying you met, but you actually played against him. First, I mean, how much of an experience is that at a personal level? Because you played football for a long while, but even you must have felt that was a great moment. Yeah, it was great to meet, uh, in fact, not only Leon Messi, it was the entire Barcelona game, mm. uh, the team, because they, they're great players and uh, it's, it's one of the best teams in the world. And it was amazing to play against them, even though it was a charity game, but amazing, it was a fantastic game. Mm, and I definitely love the experience. I saw you as your child in there also taking a picture with Lionel Messi. I, <laughs> I was in Uganda, but I was feeling happy on your own behalf. Uh, but let's quickly talk football now. Uh, your season uh, down in South Africa just ended. Uh, mm. How beautiful a season was it for you? Yeah, quite hectic. Uh, a lot of games, Champions League, uh, Cup games, and trying to win the league with a lot of pressure from uh, Orlando Pirates, obviously with Coach Mitchell trying to turn around the tables for them. And... Uh, we had to win it because we finished second last season. So for us, it was a must win because we had no excuse. You can't finish second and then stay second. You mm. have to go on, on top of the other teams. And uh, the guys fought and we managed to wrap it up before uh, the last two games, I think. Yeah. How competitive I, I, has it been though this season? Because we had a different winner last campaign out. Uh, you left Supersport, crossed over to Sundowns. Of course, did well on the continent as well. Uh, Mitchell has crossed over to Orlando Pirates. They piled the pressure on you guys. Uh, uh, Rate it with African football because you've been across the continent. How big is the South African league? Look, football has changed lately because you, you, you will never know who's going to win the game or who's going to win the league. Uh, we've seen it also in Uganda where things have turned around and uh, everyone is becoming a powerhouse. So. Uh, you need to give your best every time you play any game because you don't choose games. Uh, if you start choosing games, then you're not going to win the league. Mm. So for us, it was very important to stay consistent and uh, try and stay uh, on top of the lock because the moment we got on top in January, we never went out. And uh, it was the pressure that we, 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 we sustained and we moved on because we were not focusing more on them. We were focusing on ourselves, trying to... Uh, extend the lead and get maximum points in every game. Okay, they, uh, but, uh, I want to take you back, further back than this. Um, unfortunately, I don't think you were born then, so you might not know a few things. But um, there's, there will be a debate, if there's not one already, about um, the greatest goalkeeper Uganda has had. And um, I don't know, because I want for you to tell me what it feels like to be uh, mentioned in the same breath, uh, to be perhaps even um, having surpassed guys who, I mean, when I was growing up, the name Paul Sally, and it's not because we, we share the name. Um, I, I mean, this guy was um, unbelievable. I, you didn't think would ever get anything bigger than that. Mm. The guys who'd been there before me and seen uh, Joseph Masaja get play, perhaps thought the same. Uh, but then after Paul Sally, then comes Sadiq Wasa. Uh, and um, uh, for, um, these were all KCCA guys. These are, these are great guys who kept goal for their club and, and for the country. Um, uh, to, to amazing levels, amazing levels. Uganda has not had a, a dearth of uh, goalkeepers the way we've had in other positions. But then uh, between Sadiq and uh, Dennis Onyango, perhaps, then the guys who came in there didn't quite compare. Mm. Apart from maybe Hussein Sali, who was only here for, for, for a fleeting little time before he went to the U.S., unfortunately. Um, what does it feel like for, I mean, for you to be mentioned in that breath? And um, would you uh, be uh, bold enough, cocky enough, to actually say you've surpassed these guys, can you can you consider yourself the greatest <laughs> Ugandan goalkeeper? Would, would would you actually be bold enough to say it here? Well, uh, I still have a lot to achieve. Ah. 
But uh, <laughs> that's a political answer. There. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's all right. Let's hear you. No. Let's hear I was, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was inspired by uh, the great Sadiq Waswa because when, okay. uh, when I was growing up, he's one of the guys who were uh, mentioned a lot. Mm -hmm. In uh, look, we, we didn't have TV by that time, but uh, on radio, all you hear is Sadiq Waswa save the penalty, he's doing well. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I grew up wanting to be like him, being oh. famous and being spoken about everywhere like Sadiq was and he's a legend for me he's a legend but uh, I, I won't I wouldn't say that I'm I'm not one of the best mm -hmm. I'll say I've been I think I've played for a longer time than most of the goalkeepers yes. at the national team I think I've been there for a couple of years 12 or 13 years at the yes. national team and it's not easy because there are a lot of challenges that come through with uh, with that you get yeah. this guy's also played for a long time but for you 2005 to 2018 is yeah. 13 years and counting mm. and looks like you're going stronger it's uh, <laughs> it's, it's not going to be easy yeah. in terms of longevity you've also been there but um of course having played at a professional level mm. um outside of the country is, is you've gone on and achieved something they didn't they didn't get the opportunities that you have and you've taken them it takes me to the other thing um, having been a sportsman also who has lived through the same eras and seen what has happened, the plight of our sportsmen, the difference between you, the superstar, being hailed while still alive by, by the entire Uganda, because when, when we put your name on Twitter, it just goes crazy. When um, your, your name is mentioned in Uganda here, I think everybody will gather. The difference between you and yesterday's great, um, you know, guys who we only fully appreciated and praised properly after they had passed on, I can just give you four names. I can give you Philip Omondi, Majid Mosisi, Paul Hasule, and Godfrey Katerega. Mm. These are four of the greatest Ugandan players ever, and I'm talking top 20. Actually, they could all be in top, four, top 10, uh, at least three of them. Godfrey Katerega, you might have question marks. Talent-wise, he's there, but maybe he didn't play uh, long enough at the highest level to, to be. But these guys are probably top 10. And we only talk about them posthumously. Yes. We only praise them properly, fully, appreciate them fully after they've gone. The change in Ugandan football and sport is such that we've got to a time now where we hail our heroes when they're still alive. I mean, can you conceptualize that? Do you understand where we've come from and, and, and where we are here and what you, you mean for, for, for the kids growing up and for the sporting fraternity in general? Do you, do you actually conceptualize it or will you first retire and then fully <laughs> appreciate what, what, what it is you've been? Uh, it's, it's great that uh, people appreciate us and uh, especially uh, players who have done well for the country and for the clubs because uh, it's something that really motivates us as players that we, we inspire youngsters out there and uh, we, we, we really show them the way because it's not easy but uh, when, when, when people appreciate you you need to give your best all the time and you have got no space for, for, for mistakes and uh, uh, it, it, it develops our game because there's a youngster out there who will want to be as famous as Dennis Onyanga and be talked about in the future as well as one of the great players. I mean, uh, Farouk Mi has done it as well and he's still growing. I think he can become bigger and bigger and uh, we, we need to uh, 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 at least to, to, to allow people to, 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 to talk about us every time Look by nice, doing yeah. great stuff. Yeah. Mm. Um, um, Dennis, uh, I sat on the CAF Media Experts panel that voted for you, by the way, so you should be saying thank <laughs> you to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you're going to No, but, um, you know, you won the African Footballer of the Year Award as a goalkeeper. Even mm. Manuel Neuer in 2014 uh, couldn't, you know, win the Ballon d'Or as, uh, you know, as a goalkeeper. But you stood out there and, you know, wrote history as, as a goalkeeper who's convinced the entire continent that you're the best. How important was that for you, but also to shine light on Ugandan football in general? Well, uh, as a person, I started off by uh, dreaming to be in the group stages of the, gr of the Champions League, because that means a lot for a player and for a country to be in the group stages of the Champions League, as we've seen also KCC doing that for the country. And everyone is speaking about Ugandan football going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was the dream. But as we progressed on, I, I thought of being one of the best because uh, I was in the CAF team every 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 month, uh, whether it's March day two, March day three, and it gave me hope. And I thought, yeah, maybe I can be one of the greatest players Uganda has ever produced. And I wanted to be one of the 
uh, the first Ugandans to win to the, 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 the Champions League. And uh, it was great for me just to be in the top three. I thought, like, look, I've done my best. I've been in the top three. Uh, because there are a lot of footballers out there, a lot of goalkeepers. But for me to be one of the best in Africa, it showed that uh, in football anything is possible because no one gave me a chance that yeah. a goalkeeper can win. Uh, yeah. Now, yeah. again, I'll put it into perspective for you because it's important for even the viewers out there and for Ugandans to understand mm. um, where Ugandan football has come from in terms of the history. There are only two other players before that could have been in contention to win this kind of award if it was there then. But we used to have only one African Football of the Year award. Now, um, if, if you had one best on the continent, like you did, mm -hmm. 1978, Philip Amondi, I think would still have finished second to Abdul Razak, the Ghanaian. But there's some circles where they think he, he should have won it. Mm. And then in 1992, Majid Mosisi. Because in 91, Villa reached the cup final, the, the, the yes. equivalent of the Champions League now, yeah. the club championship. And lost to Club Africa. Yeah, and he would have lost to Fazu Rossi yeah. in that vote. But in 92, when he, they lost to Shooting Stars in the equivalent of the Confederation Cup, Musi was the best player of the continent. I believe that because there was a goal getters competition, an international goal getters competition, where he only came second to George Ware mm. among Africans in the top 10, and yet George Ware was playing outside of Africa. Mm. So I think if there had been a vote, you'd have won it. No, but nobody else has come close. And then uh, Dennis um, comes and does it as a goalkeeper. As a goalkeeper. Uh, it, it's just amazing um, that um, that, ca that could be achieved. But tell me, I want to take you now to the next level. Well, I've, I've uh, invoked history by talking about Majid Musi and Philip Amondi and Sadiq Wasa, who's alive, but uh, people like Kateriga and Hasule were dead. And um, all these guys, by the time they died, they were impoverished people who were ailing for a very long time and couldn't get help, but couldn't afford uh, to treat themselves. The difference then and now, mm. when the people out there, maybe you want to put it again in perspective, especially um, not, not for the hunger zone, but especially for the young sportsman coming up. Um, that's it. Is it a situation that is be behind you and the current Ugandan professional that there's enough in your bank account? There's yeah, enough, well, Yonyango makes a lot of money. There's, what enough, <laughs> oh, there's <laughs> enough in your bank account. Yeah. There's enough at NSSF and in your insurance, mm. and that there's enough um, it, in one or two businesses you've invested in and in assets that you own uh, to ensure that you're not going to live that, that kind of life. Uh, and suffer the way most Ugandan footballers have mm. post football. Can you can you say that for sure? Can you before, before, uh, sh can you tell us that, right. that um, you're on the right track as far as uh, taking care of yourself and your family is concerned, and that those kinds of things cannot happen Mark, to you? Before before Onyango answers, mm. let me let you that he has a, uh, know that he has a very big contract at Mamelo Oh yeah, <laughs> he, he, he <laughs> has a lot of match bonuses. So tell me, tell me about and, and, it. And, and, <laughs> and by the way, at Mamelo Sundowns, you must know that they have a car sponsor. Yeah. So already, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, about no, you, can, the guys are telling you about ailed for a long time. It's not as if they, they popped yeah. up today and uh, Absolutely. unfortunately Absolutely. met their end in a car accident or something mm -hmm. sudden. Majid Mosisi ailed for a long time. So did Paul Hasule. So did Godfrey Katerega. So did Philip Omondi. That's why I actually picked them so uh, uh, for, as examples because of their greatness as players mm -hmm. and the kind of life, the proper life they lived after football and how they passed on. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and I mean, and you represent a different generation. Yeah. Can you say for sure that you've done this? And then what advice would it be out there for the next generation of sportsmen? Well, as for me, I'm trying my best to at least secure my future, life after football, mm -hmm. because uh, we do get life skills at our clubs. I, I did get my life skills at uh, Super Sport United because where they, they, they bring in someone to talk about life after football, how you manage your bank account, your money, how to spend it and you know everyone loves the fancy cars mm. but at the end of the day uh, that's not something that's going to bring my back money mm -hmm. you need something that's going to bring money, money to your account and uh, I think those people didn't get the chance to be educated about such okay. stuff and uh, I think Ugandan clubs should also try and advise youngsters out there to try and know how to save money build a house and mm. you know you, because football will end football can end tomorrow but your life must go on, and uh, for for a footballer like in Uganda to be con con competing with someone who's playing in Europe, you you can't because you don't know how much he's earning. So, it's it's very very important for clubs to help the players and uh, teach them how to save and how 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 to know how to manage them their 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 bank accounts because. 
football is a short career and there's life after football. So for me, I'm trying my best to do that. I, I'm not yet there, but... <laughs> okay. But you're close. But um, <laughs> yeah. Ibrahim uh, Sekanja, uh, Timothy Batabaire, and you, I mean, the guys like mm -hmm. you have played outside mm -hmm. for a long time. And um, the other guys are doing well, right? They're yeah. also doing as yeah, well as are. you? They're no? doing fine. Um, uh, uh, doing the, they, okay. Mark, I'm trying, I'm trying not to uh, uh, trap Onyango into oh. a political battle oh, here. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, but <laughs> it's a question I really have to ask him as well. Uh, feel free not to answer because you're still playing with the Uganda crane. And we all know the politics that Don't give him that football. option yet. <laughs> <laughs> Just shoot, Andrew. Shoot. Yes, so, uh, most of the journalists in Uganda today received a message uh, from Milton Mitchell Sredojevic. Uh, former head coach of the Uganda Cranes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to quickly read through, just take a small little part, uh, and I think I should have the first comment from Asha before it comes to show me, so she can water it down. It says, I challenge all you there in Uganda, uh, uh, before that your coach, De Sabre, stop abusing me by promising good football, playing style and philosophy or to Ugandans, yet that was empty promise. But I'll jump some lines. I'll come to the most important line. It says, please let your coach try to win nine away competitive matches in Europe like I did in my spell, Sorry, in Africa, mm -hmm. or at least let him make a result against teams that will represent Africa in the World Cup. He goes on to say, we beat Nigeria 1-0 in Nigeria, drew with Senegal 0-0 in Senegal. Both of these teams are going to the World Cup. Then he goes on to say, now they are losing Central Africa Republic and, Ni and Niger, countries that can't clean shoes to Nigeria and Senegal. <laughs> I, I think this is a very hard statement. I, Asha, do you want to start or should I start with Nyango? Let me start. Mm. Let me start. So what he thinks about what he has to say. Um, mm. Yes, it's a little bit harsh from uh, Micho, but perhaps there's some truth in the statement that he's saying. Um, it's very shocking right now on the path that the Uganda cranes have been taking to see us, you know, with one win in nine games in a space of six months. Yes. You know, uh, th there's no football fan out there who is happy with those results. And to be honest, you can't blame anyone for questioning them. But, but, the Sabre has been uh, in charge for, you know, since December. Mm. Uh, he's still trying to figure out, you know, the system that, you know, he wants to play. He wants to play attacking football. We must remember that Mitchell had been in this job for four years and a half. That's a long time for him to understand. If you remember, there's a time people were calling for his head. People were calling for Mitchell to be fired. But Fufa stayed, you know, and, and decided to, um, you know, keep him. They stuck with him. They stuck with him. And then, yeah. yes, it paid off eventually. So it comes with being in the job for a long time. Yeah. So maybe we should give I'd the I'd like to know, time. because maybe I'm behind times, yes. uh, before, before Dennis chips in. Mm. Mm. Is this um, uh, in retaliation to something Desabre said? Because I don't think Desabre has attacked Mitchell. No, I think no, no, Ugandans no. seem to appreciate Desabre's no, no, no. philosophy. No, he, yeah. he, he's saying that because you know when Desabre came into uh, when he took over the cranes, yes. he said that you know he's going to play attacking football. He promised so attacking sort of football. Like attacking yeah, Mitchell, Mitchell for playing. Yeah. Well, it was implied, football. but I don't think he knew too much about the guy to even yeah. uh, to even. Um, he, he wasn't direct. But, but, but yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, and, and also I'm thinking. If you're Mitchell and you've done all these great things with the gun and all, how about moving on? Yeah. Yes. Uh, you, you're at a great club That's doing right. great things. How about just Onyango, moving on? What do you make of the time and under the Acting like a jilted lover. How, what do you make huh? of... <laughs> what, what do you make of Yeah, like a woman scorned. So <laughs> message, uh, message from a woman scorned. You, you've had a chance of working with both. <laughs> you're now under the Sabre. For example, what, what changes between the two and what do you make of, of his tactics? Well, uh... It's tough times right now for us and for the coach because uh, he's, he's trying to build his brand of football. And uh, look, it's not it's not easy to uh, change players' mentality and the, the style of play because we've seen it also at Man City when Pep came into to Man City and he, he didn't win anything in the first season. Mm. And he came on and he's been unbeaten for the last, I think, the, the entire season. And uh, I think they should just give the coach time. Mm -hmm. uh, Whatever happens between the co the two coaches, it's their own problem. Maybe they have their own battles mm. on the side. But uh, Coach Mitchell, I think he should move on because he did his part. And uh, it's the Coach De Sabri's time. And, uh, but but Antonio, you're looking at these statistics. Yeah. We I mean, haven't scored that many goals. Yes, but Mas the only win Joffrey we have is, is a good friend of yours. Yes, Prince good friend of yours. He's retired. <laughs> are, are we lacking players up front, Onyango? You're the man who knows this thing. <laughs> <laughs> We're building. Yes. Yeah. When you build, you don't start from the roof. You mm. start from the. That's a very from political the from the fan yeah. <laughs> Look, <laughs> we're building the team. No, but and, it's uh, it's it's, re it's realistic as it's, well. It's, yeah. give, uh, it I think it's way too early. Because mm. uh, his, his mission is to take us back to the Nations Cup, and we've uh, we haven't started that uh, with him. And I think the game against Tanzania is very very important for him. 
unfortunately it's at home and there's a lot of pressure and we must get the results for the for the team and uh, I think we must be supportive to him and try and comfort him because we need him he's our new coach and there's no there's no need for us to get another coach because he will also rebuild the team and yeah. it's going to get us backwards rather than going forward so for me I think whatever coach Mitchell is saying it's it's his own opinion and uh, as Ugandans we must stick with what we have right now and try and get the team forward yeah to, to Okay. I wanted to give him Sorry. two final because we're running out of time. It's all right. Uh, two final questions for you. Uh, first, well, first of all, uh, by your age, everyone says the goalkeeper is in his prime now. Um, you've seen Uganda cranes change generations. Mm. You've seen all these players coming through. So two quick questions. First of all, how do you compare the current team we have to some of the teams you've played in terms of general strength? Uh, then I'll ask you the other one, which is more controversial. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you start with the controversy? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it's nice to have a punchline at the end. Uh, well, uh, it's, it's, the team has a lot of youngsters. Obviously, it's just probably me who's old. and uh, Maybe us and us are coming in and a few guys. But uh, every team has got, it's got its own uh, senior players. And uh, it's, it's a very good team that because uh, we, 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 we love each other. We, we, we don't uh, isolate each other. It doesn't matter how old you are. We mm. sit together and we discuss our problems and try and solve our problems. And... Uh, for me, I think that's what keeps us going, and that's what has kept the team uh, together for a very long time. I don't think a lot of ch a lot of players have changed lately. Uh, we just get a new faces in and out, but there's that core of the team that stays and uh, keeps the team going. And uh, I think we're on the right path right now. My final question to you before we cross over to Joel Kamadi. I'll tell you something. I watch a lot of European football. I, I watch the French league one. I, I watch the Bundesliga, the Serie A, the Premier League. And I watch some goalkeepers in these leagues. And I'm like, ah, but no nyango have a sovora. The question <laughs> now is, at your age, in your prime, is there even a rumor anywhere that you could leave sundowns for Europe? For Liverpool, for example. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to talk about Liverpool. Liverpool has been struggling with goalkeepers for yeah. the last five years. <laughs> and uh, look, uh, it's not a lot of goalkeepers from Africa that go to Europe. And these people have their uh, philosophy because they build their thing slowly by surely. But uh, I've got offers up to now from... Okay, from... What's... what's is it Asia in yeah. Saudi Arabia? Which somewhere which there. Club? No, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you which country. Which is the club? <laughs> no, you got offers in, from the Middle East, yeah? Yeah, in, mm -hmm. in, in Saudi Arabia. And, and Sundown said no, because mm. they believe that I give them what they want, and they give me what I want. So for them, to m they, they believe I can stay at the club longer than even after football and oh, try yeah. and do something with the youngsters out there and uh, stay on as an ambassador for the club. So uh, at my age, I want to move on, but I must also consider life after football as i said mm -hmm. who's gonna look after me do they want me at the club and i must look at all these things as much as i want to play in europe but there's an opportunity for me at the club to stay and work under the same uh, management Dennis Onyango, Uganda's number one. Thank you very, very much for joining us on the Press Box tonight. Please feel free to send in all your reactions uh, to Dennis Onyango on Twitter. The hashtag is NTV Press Box. And trust me, he'll be answering as many as he can, even after the show. Now, the Press Box is doing everything to push and develop women's sport in the country as well. On the show tonight, we have a very special guest, uh, a professional footballer, probably the biggest female export for Uganda out there. She plays her football. Uh, in England, I probably shouldn't give you much because you might not know much. But first look at this, then we cross over Joel Kamadi. and uh, Dennis Onyango and everybody else. Of course, tonight uh, we were asking you about how many, uh, who are the two teams you think actually will make it to the World Cup final in Russia this year? Are you going with uh, Brazil, Germany, or are you going with uh, France, uh, Af uh, Senegal, or Egypt? You let us know. Use the hashtag NTV uh, Press Box. 
but the big one is here now. We have her here with us. She plays for Crystal Palace. Of course, she's played before for Charlton Athletic. She as well turns out for Crested Cranes as a midfielder here in Uganda. I'm pleased to be joined by Jean Seninde. Jean, welcome to the show. Thank you. Nice to be here. Now, you just got back yesterday. How are you finding the weather? Have you adjusted yet? <laughs> I'm always used to the Ugandan weather anyway. Yeah. How did you start off playing football and how did you find yourself at Crystal Palace? Was it always an interest uh, that you had picked from uh, right when you were a kid? Um, I started playing football when I was eight years old in our compound at home with my brother and seeing him play with the rest of the people around, I thought it was something interesting because I loved watching the boys play. But you know that time we didn't have so many opportunities as girls to play in school. But now things have changed a lot. Um, there are um, girls playing in primary schools and secondary schools, but then I didn't have the chance to actually play in secondary school. But when I went to Gaza High School, the headmistress introduced the uh, the girls team for the first time so I was so happy and that's when my football journey started um, I thought it was something that I wanted to see how far I could go with it so when the opportunity came for me to go and uh, play um, out of the country I thought it would be interesting to see how far I can go with the game and I went to Charlton and then I went to London Phoenix for three seasons and I went to uh, Queen's Park Rangers for another three seasons and now at Crystal Palace so for me it's been interesting for me and I, I I'm still learning as a player mm -hmm. and I just want to see how far I can go with the game. How, how is uh, Crystal Palace treating you so far? I know you told me earlier that you don't even get to, uh, you rarely meet <laughs> the Crystal Palace men's team but how's Crystal Palace and how's that working out for you? For me it's been interesting because I went there straight from um, Queen's Park Rangers and for me it's about challenging myself and seeing what more I can add to my journey because I'm still young enough, I still, I'm still interested in the game and going to Palace for me was about in, um, challenging myself and seeing what else I can do and for me it's been a learning curve and I'm, I'm still enjoying it and I'll, um, I'll see how far I'll go with the journey. Uh, Jean, what would you say would be your pinnacle of your playing career? Uh, what are you looking out for in the future, in your playing career? Um, I would love to see um, us get involved more with the national, with the national team. Obviously, with um, the Crested Cranes, we've had quite a few games in. I played a last second in 2016, and this one was postponed earlier. But I would love us to compete more. And uh, for me, having more cups under my name would be good because representing the country is also very nice, a very nice thing. But also inspiring other girls through the game and showing them that we can achieve all these things together. That's something that I would love to see. Now, if you're just joining us, uh, or if you didn't know that for a fact, uh, Jean, of course, is supporting Manchester United's One Matters Common Goal project. Can you just shed some light on what that is about and who is involved? Uh, the initiative was started... Um last year and all players, coaches, teams, uh, anyone can join the, um, the initiative. You give a percentage of your salary um, and this, this money is used for the social football, for a good cause to help with charities and football um, communities that need the money more. And for me it's, it's a good thing because the little things we do because it's one percent of your salary so it's not much and it's good to give that because Football has changed the world because I always say that football is more than just a game. It's not just the playing, but also the friendships you can create, the difference you can make in your society and community. So it's, it's been a good thing for me to do. Did one matter directly get in touch with you for this Common Goal project? How, did, how does it work? Um, I mean, I'm a player, and when I saw the initiative, and when I, I was told to do it, um, it's something that I want to do because I'm already doing some work here with so many other girls. I want to see all of us move up together and do something interesting. Because I'm doing it already, it's something that interested me and I didn't have any second thoughts doing it. Um, I think it's a very good initiative that's going to change the world because it, it started last year, but now uh, so many players have come on board and it's already made a very big difference and it's one of the biggest organizations now in the world, which is, which is very interesting. Um, give us some brief history about, I know you have a Senin Day Women's Foundation. Uh, what is it doing and uh, what do you intend to see it grow to? 
So the foundation was started uh, years ago anyway, but we do the women and youth empowerment through the skills training. We have the sports sector in it. Uh, we have the education and then the health. But with the um, skills training, we go to various communities in the country, uh, skilling them with um, skills like cake baking, tailoring, hair making. So we are giving them those skills because when we go to the communities, some of them didn't uh, get the education, but sometimes people don't get the education because they didn't have the opportunities. So with these skills they acquire, they can be able to go and start own jobs and make a difference in their communities. But also with the sports, yeah, we focus more with the girls because for me, women's football, I, I'm a strong advocate of women's football and I want to see um, that women's football is, I think now, is a very big brand in so many countries. And I feel like it's something that sponsors in Uganda can exploit because women's football is the talk of the of, of everywhere anyway because everyone wants to see it grow. So I think as a country, as people or as players, we have a very big role to see that the game grows and we see that difference in our country as well. Speaking of, you recently were invited to speak at FIFA in Zurich and just I think it was because of your um, sending the foundation and the, the work you're doing. Uh, what role do you think the people in your capacity have to play to ensure you know that more women are involved in sport regardless? Uh, being a role model is one thing that you can do but for me playing out of the country but also playing for the national team I know you can have so many uh, other girls looking up to you so it's doing the right thing so that other people look up to you but also it's um, creating that chance for people to believe in their dreams and have the hope that mm -hmm. together we can achieve something great uh, because there is so, uh, there are so many talented girls in the country but all we need are the resources, we need the facilities. So for me I feel like we can do more um, as the media, as, as the players, as uh, myself. It's, it always starts with you because when people ask you what are you doing to make a difference, why would you ask someone else, have you asked that with yourself so you have to first see what you've done to make the difference and then if together we do uh, so many other things we will together um, see the rise of women's football but also we need the men to support that as well so it's good when we have men on board to support um, to see the game growing because with football me I support us promoting the values like equality because football as a game the same way I train every day is the same way a man trains but I know people would compare and say a man is faster the men's game is more interesting but actually women are intelligent on the field and I love that and I feel like we could all explore that and see something good in it. Let's talk a bit about the crested cranes um, do you feel like there are where uh, are you where you need to be at the moment or could there be some improvement, major improvements uh, needed in the game of football amongst you? Uh, we shall get there, but we need to do more. Um, you can see other countries, the USA, we imagine they're already there, but they're still also um, advocating for equality. We, we want, as women's footballers, we want the same salaries just like the men. We want to have the same facilities. We want to have the same hotels where they sleep. We want to have the same um, amount of... Um, games that they're having. We want to see that if the men's team is ranked somewhere, the women's team should also be ranked somewhere yeah, because, because yeah, yeah, that's and it, it's that's still football. It's, it doesn't matter if it's men's football or women's football, it's still football. We train just the same, we give up just the same hours to train. So it should be something um, we should promote the equality in the game and see that um, we are branding women's football differently but also making sure that it's coming up. All right, just before we, we head to quick fire with G, uh, I'm just going to touch a bit uh, on your social media comments here and see what everybody is saying because there's a whole lot to go through. Um, let me start with um, uh -huh, Stephen Kawuki who says, I'm happy to see Jean Seninde hosted on NTV Press Box. Jean, thanks for all the effort in development, developing women's football. Manzi Daniel say, uh, France and Brazil seem to be the most balanced sides of the lot, possessing physicality, speed and skill, uh, but Messi shall be key in his, likely, in his likely to be final World Cup at the peak of his powers. Of course, you're commenting about the social media question that we have. Uh, Sir Fabian Pavez, you say, why doesn't Jean break into the Crystal Palace men's team? She can beat Benteke to a place in the starting lineup. Oh, that would be interesting. But, um... Yeah. How we'll often see. do you get to meet the, the Crystal Palace men's team players? I mean, uh, once in a while. Yannick Bolasi, 
uh, uh, of course, who used to be there, and, and uh, Ben Teki, as, as they say, uh, Wilfred Zaha. How, how often do you normally get to meet them? I mean, once in a while, because we also, apart from just the playing, we also do a lot of foundation work with the yeah. Palace Foundation. But um, because they train at different times and uh, us as well. But for me, it's not about um, when we see them or something. But I mean, women's football and men's football is different. But if we can all come together and do other things together, like promoting the game, promoting equality, the respect in football, I think that we can do together. All right. Um, Ka Chagwe Disan, you say the fact that our only win is against the unknown Sao Tome and Principe, it gives me a thousand reasons to be worried about Dosabre. Let's hope something will change and will change soon. Stephen Kauke again, you say, Coach Dosabre should be given enough time to change Uganda Cranes. With time, he can change the team. Um, and uh, Sazi Andrew, you still say, you can see it right in Onyango's eyes that he loves the Masanda Wana. Uh, of course, I think he got that message. Um, we have uh, Sir Fabian Pavez who says those statements from Micho are simply ridiculous and unacceptable. Staying in Uganda for too long might have affected his mind of thinking and thoughtful reasoning. I'm going to come back to more of your social media comments, but we do have, it's that time when you do have quick fire for you, Jean. So these are questions you will answer at the top of your head. Don't think about it too much. Say it as it is. Answer it yeah. as it is. Tell me when you're ready. I'm ready. You ready? Yeah. Dress or pants? Pants. All right. Makeup or no makeup at all? Definitely makeup. Okay. So you go to, to the field with makeup on? Um, I love my lipstick, so I don't <laughs> All right. Yeah. Gym or a night out? Gym. 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 Yeah. Okay. Uh, favorite Ugandan musician? Um, that's a tricky one, but I'm going to have to say Cindy. Cindy? Yeah. All right. Uh, Messi or Ronaldo? Ooh. Ronaldo. Why? Because I think he works hard. Okay. And Messi is intelligent, but let's put it out there for the hard workers. Okay. Uh, who's your role model in terms of uh, football? Oh, football. Um, I love Wendy Renard in France. He's a, she's a centre-back um, with the uh, French women's national team and Lyon. Uh, I love the way she plays. She's a tall character and I love what she does. I look up to her, yeah. But in other things, my parents, my mom and my dad inspire me. Fantastic. Yeah. Finally, Ronaldo or Onyango? Ugandans, Onyango, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna have to say that. Oh, fantastic. Well, I'll be coming back to you with more of our social media comments. For now, we're going to take a short break, but when we return, we have more of Jin Seninde and of course the World Cup is upon us just 10 days left tell us who you think will make it to the finals which two teams actually you think will make it to the finals we'll be back after this break <laughs> 